hello and welcome in this video we will go over the things that absolutely helped me when it comes to passing the OCP exam and I will give you all the advice that I have so that you can get your OCP yourself and hopefully not having to waste a lot of money on this, uh, exam retakes because I've seen people do this and I've seen people that has to simply stop with the OCP they give up because they found it too difficult or they simply just didn't have the funds um, because they failed several times and it cost money for exam retake and that's just a headache and uh, that's just throwing away money and it's just stressful and it's just a pain right so we want to uh, avoid it as much as humanly possible right so the first advice that I would give you is to understand the actual exam structure itself because if you use the PAN tool something like SQL map to do an automated SQL injection then that's not allowed and you won't be able to pass the exam if that's something that you had done on one of the machines. The same thing with using Metasploit on more than one machine. Um, if you reuse Metasploit or any aspect of it, uh, like an interpreter, then again, that's not valid and you can't pass it if you did that. Another thing that's very important is to rescan the machines that you are after. The reason being is because environments can be unstable. So if you scan once, then it's very possible that there's a port that you actually need to see that you just simply didn't see, right? So that's why rescanning is incredibly important. Environments or even tools aren't perfect. So I highly suggest rescanning every single machine at least, at least twice, right? If you want to use a different tool for it as well, something like Nmap and then do something like Rosscan or whatever you want, I would highly recommend that. Especially when you get stuck. If you get stuck at something, just rescan it. Make sure that you have actually gathered all the information because that's a very, very, very annoying way to, to fail the exam with. So I really don't want that happening to you guys. So make sure that you do that. That's very, very important. Another piece of advice I have to you as well is that it's very important to actually note down the evidence that you gather as you're doing the exam because it's not only the exam itself it's also the reporting so after the exam is over you won't be able to have access to the labs again right so it's very important that you actually collect the evidence that you need such as all of the screenshots such as all of the outputs of the scans that gives you relevant evidence to essentially walk through what the vulnerabilities were read. So this is extremely important. Don't quote unquote hack through everything, but then you don't have the evidence to prove it because again, that would also not be sufficient. I really don't want to see you guys fail over silly stuff like this. So just really make sure that you collect all the evidence and that you can recreate the steps in the report to prove that you did everything that you claim that you did and that you can prove it, right? Now, the next topic is about sleep. Should you sleep? Should you not sleep? Realistically, people have passed that did sleep. People have passed that didn't sleep. So I'm not going to tell you what to do. Do you have realistic? Realistically, whatever you think will work the best for you is what I would recommend. Now, generally, it is advised to sleep because you also don't need 24 hours to do the exam. Realistically, some people think that like, ah, oh, 24 hours to do all of that is uh, like, it's not a lot of time, but if you are prepared, which you should be, then you don't need that time at all. Like I completed mine and I remember being done with the 80 section within three or four hours and the entire thing I don't remember. Maybe roughly around 10 hours, something like that. So, but yeah, so you realistically, you don't need all of that time if you are prepared. When it comes to taking small breaks, however, I would recommend it. But again, it's completely up to you. I found that taking a lot of small breaks was really, was really helpful to me to help with like the mental fog and to just continuously get back to the machines with a bit more clear mind. Because if you get fully tunnel visioned into uh, whatever you're working on, sometimes it can be a bit difficult to take the necessary step back and to look at everything more holistically. So again, not only breaks, but I would recommend, again, as I said, rescanning in case the infrastructure has been unstable. That certainly is very possible and has happened for sure. Um, but also just making sure that you don't forget about a single port or making sure that you are fingerprinting things sufficiently. Did I go through all of the word lists that I should be going through or did I get lazy? 
did I did I test everything that I should be testing? Or again, did I forget about a small detail, you know? Taking a step back is very, very, very important to just making sure that you have done everything that you know you should be doing. So again, that's, uh, and I just found to me personally that taking a lot of small breaks and revisiting my scans and trying to look at things more holistically was really helpful for me to not go down a rabbit hole and waste a lot of time uh, in the path that was not the right one, right? So that would be my next advice. But realistically, it isn't that complicated. You just have to understand the basics of how the exam is laid out in terms of what's the goal, how many points do I need, what tools are and aren't allowed, what can and can I can I not do, so 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 that you don't um, like so that you don't message someone on Discord under the exam and just say like stupid things, right? So, you just make sure you have the basics. Make make sure you have a camera and make sure that you are well prepared for the exam. Make sure that there's no uh, topics that really surprises you where you just didn't think about it at all, right? I'll give you some very basic examples. Buffer overflow, for instance, you don't have to prepare for for this exam, uh, the current one. And using, again, tools like uh, Thickle Map is not allowed. Using auto pawn features of power, uh, power Up, for instance, is also not allowed. You can use the invoke all checks functionality of it, but you can't use the auto pawn functionalities of it, right? Because auto pawn tools is simply not allowed, right? These are the basics that you should absolutely know. So don't let anything basic like this surprise you and just make sure that you are well prepared for the things you basically know will come, right? Very best Windows Linux, you know will come. Active Directory, you know will come. Initial access, you know will come. And something like pivoting is very possible that it can come, right? So if you are prepared for that, then you are prepared for the common like web attacks that can actually lead to shell, like public exploit, LFI, different techniques to get RCE there, command ejection, XXE, etc. Again, having a solid recon methodology where you will actually find the relevant ports, then it is basically what you need. Yeah, so basically just don't be surprised by anything. And what I mean by that is just have an actual strategy for going in and then make sure you have done a lot of volume within that. And that really is exactly what we focus on in the course. And I just break down everything in way more detail than I do here. And if you've seen the two hour free course here on YouTube, and uh, hopefully that uh, was useful to you, then I think you will absolutely love the community. There are people in there that's doing the OCP currently and you can ask me questions directly as well. So people have been really enjoying it and found it useful. and. Obviously, the notes as well. <laughs> People have been really liking those. It's a massive cherry tree notes that I had uh, that I used for the OCP and that I use in, like, for job and bug bounty, and it just has a ton of shit. But yeah, you can get uh, whatever that uh, you want. Uh, I'll link it in the description down below that you're interested in. But other than that, yeah, really hope uh, this video was useful to you guys. And uh, if you have any video suggestions, whether it's OCP or something else, please let me know that below. Below. And um, thanks so much for watching. Have an awesome day.